What's up guys and welcome back to my garage. If you're enjoying this series, make sure you leave a like in the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. In the last episode, we purchased a massive $50,000 garage extension and it looks incredible. Now we're going to have so much more room for activities. It's honestly going to be pretty great. But at the tail end of that previous episode, I also mentioned our next project vehicle is going to be a sort of tow rig for us kind of the resident beater, but rather than doing what we usually do and purchasing a vehicle from the dealership that's that's basically running perfectly, nearly mint can dish, instead what I'd like to do today is purchase that vehicle from the junkyard. So we're going to catch a cab out there and we'll see what we can find. Before we get any closer, I'm actually going to increase the junkyard size. What that's going to do is is increase the amount of vehicles that are going to that are going to populate once we actually do get close enough to load all of them in. So Hopefully that'll allow us to, you know, find a find a decent vehicle on the first attempt instead of having to come back here multiple times. Having said that, though, it does look like our frame rate has suffered slightly, but it's all right. We'll be uh, we'll be in and out of here pretty quick. Also, the wolf I mentioned in the previous episode, the the wolf wagon. I was under the impression that it was already released, but apparently all the clips that I had seen were from people who had like early access. Uh, to that model and it officially I believe yesterday the 15th it was officially released so we'll definitely be on the lookout for that I don't necessarily want an El Camino since we've already got one the wolf wouldn't be bad definitely wouldn't be bad but I was I was kind of wanting an NIV and I unfortunately don't see one of those here so we might actually have to leave and come back Cross your fingers, guys. Let's hope we can actually find what we're looking for. I'm I'm spotting a wolf wagon, though. That would be kind of dope. That really would be kind of dope. We've got a headliner over there just absolutely tweaking. How much? How much for this? $8,100. It is a wolf at the end of the day. They're, they're pretty expensive. Looks like we have most of the, the straight six or slant six DZ. It did have a blue interior. I'm a sucker for the blue interior. I really am. Blue or, blue or red, I guess it doesn't doesn't really matter. Wait, this is new too. They have they have adjustable suspension now. Kind of kind of like coilovers, but but not quite. And I believe that's specific to the NIV and the Wolf. I don't think it works on on any other models just yet. I'm I, dude. I'm half tempted to purchase this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. But we're not going to have that much money left over since we only have around $12,000, I believe. We've gotta. We've just gotta. Next time, bring some girls with you. What? This dude is on one. Okay, we have $4,100 left. And uh, if we hit I on this vehicle, we should be able to tow it to the garage for a mere 100 bucks. That's not too bad. And then we'll have to take a cab back there for, for 10 bones. But we now have, oh, the spawn location for that is extremely close to the garage extension. Let's see if we can just kind of push this thing around, maybe. I'm not really sure how else we would actually get it into the garage. Maybe we just fit some wheels on it. Let's see how close we are to actually being able to do that. Okay, we're missing a knuckle here. Uh, and then the hub as well. Looks like we're also missing a knuckle up there and maybe some, maybe some other things. But, you know, it should roll. It should roll, assuming we can actually get four wheels on it. So I'm going to try to get uh, the two knuckles right there. Did we need anything else on this side? No, dude, we're ready to go. To try to keep the cost as low as possible, we're back at the junkyard. Because if I remember right, we did actually have a couple of other wolves here that we might be able to steal just a couple of parts off of. I know we need a wheel, so this will definitely come in handy. Five lugs right there. How much for the whole deal? 41 bucks? Do we have to press I to buy it? No. How do we actually just purchase individual items? Oh, right click to buy. Cool, that works. We just had to drop the wrench. Now, we're just trying to get this vehicle to roll. We don't need it to like move under its own power just yet. So, I'm going to try to get everything that we need to make that happen. Wait, I'm an idiot. We don't have a vehicle to bring any of these parts back with. We're going to have to bring the Elko down here. It's going to be so difficult to try to get at all these suspension components with the vehicle, like, on the ground. 
So, bring the jack in. We're going to jack it up, get a little bit a little bit easier access to all these parts. Alrighty, finally, we've been able to retrieve the, the knuckle that we've been after. It's not in the best condition. Right click to buy for four buckaroonies. And then this guy, I guess we don't necessarily need it, but for 13 bucks, you just can't beat it. Well, you could, but that would be weird. Let's move on over to this other wolf right here and uh, we'll jack it up from the front. Hopefully it doesn't fall. It's teetering. It's teetering, but I think it'll be fine. We just need a couple more things from the driver's side uh, suspension system right here. So, once again, we're just going to remove the disc brakes and the caliper. What we really, really need is, uh, is just the knuckle. And come to think of it, I'm not so sure that we even had a strut on that side or on the opposite side. So I might as well grab this one while we're here. Condition does not matter for this stuff. Eventually, we're going to be, you know, actually kind of making it nice, at least so it so it drives nice. But it's it's still going to be a beater, all right? Don't you guys worry. We're looking at six bucks for that guy, six dollars for that, seven for the opposite side, and then 24. The hubs have been surprisingly expensive, but what we really need now are just wheels so we can get the thing rolling but it doesn't look like the wolves have any other wheels to offer us. Are those four lug? That's not gonna work on our hubs. These should be five lug. It's gonna look a little weird, but I'll take it. And it is still a 15 inch rim for 31 buckaroonies. So we have, what, two wheels in total? Oh, perfect, there's actually a few more on this thing. Even though we do only need just the one, I'm gonna buy the cheaper of the two for 35 buckaroonies all right that should be for now that should be all that we need just to get the thing rolling so i'm gonna actually have to grab a cab catch a cab again back to the garage and then we'll have to uh bring our el camino down here oh wait they're gonna be different they're gonna be different sizes though aren't they because the the tire size is a bit different it should be fine though it should be fine. Hopefully this is the last time that we have to use the El Camino as a, as a parked runner vehicle, but we made it, we made it back to the junkyard without any major accidents. So that's good, but let's get, uh, let's get these wheels just tossed in the trunk or in the, in the bed. It's, it's half car, half truck. As for our suspension components that we purchased, we're just going to get those all put up into the cab with us. And then I did have another quick look at, um, at Don't the, break anything. I won't. At the wolf wagon just before we um, headed down here. And it, it did seem like we might actually need a, uh, a strut for the rear. So let's see if we can find one. Perfect. Perfect. There we go. It's time to see if we bought just enough to be able to get this thing kind of cobbled back together and, uh, and rolling. Well, we're off to a great start. We don't quite have enough of the suspension components to actually be able to uh to mount up that that knuckle so let's see if we have enough in the rear there we go at least at least we have that going for us now we can grab our super rusty rear hub and that should just go right there and then okay so we have let's see in the front we have a standard wolf rim and tire right so that's what we're going to be doing for the other side on the front and then just so it sits more level, I'm going to put the two larger tires uh, in the rear. So we'll start with this one. If it'll... Oh, you know what? It's not going to work because it's it's just on the ground. We need to get another jack. Let's see if that's high enough. Perfect. All right, let's get that zipped on there. And we can lower the jack back down. And uh, we'll, we'll work our way around to the opposite side. Basically, just try to do the try to do the same thing. The hub over here does look slightly different, but maybe that's just because it's missing the uh, the rotor potentially. So we'll get that fastened. Get this jack drop back down. Oh, I forgot the. What am I doing today, dude? I forgot the um the struts. You know, the thing that actually like holds the weight of the vehicle up. The wheels are just gonna help us. Get it rolling around. So we have a front, a rear, and another front. So this one 
It's going to go right around there. It's getting super close to the building, and it's kind of sketching me out a little bit. Let's see if we can get this put in there somehow. We might actually have to remove the wheel. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it didn't really help that much because the strut is kind of blown after all. But uh, we didn't even need a strut for the front. I'm, I'm glad I grabbed two. What we needed was one for this side. The other one over there is actually like mint condition. Now I just have to try to figure out what's preventing me from mounting this, this hub carrier, this knuckle. We're definitely missing some other suspension component, but I just don't know what that would be. Because this side doesn't seem to have anything else other than the strut immediately connecting to the knuckle. Maybe the, maybe the tie rod needs to be loosened or, or just removed? Let's try that. Let's get that pulled out of there. And still nothing. Still a whole lot of nothing, dude. In order to better understand what it is I'm doing wrong, it might help me to see a wolf that's more complete than the one that we're currently working with. So we're going to head over to the dealership. And fingers crossed, dude, there's actually another wagon in here. I was expecting them to be a little bit more rare, but I'm not complaining. Certainly not complaining. What's this thing going for? 23,000. Good joke. Okay, I just need to uh, take a peek. Oh, yeah. We're missing the the lower control arm right there. You would think, as a car guy, you would think that I would know that. Um, but I'm, I'm also not the brightest star in the sky. So, knowing that now, um, instead of going back to the junkyard, because I don't remember actually seeing one of those on any of those wolves... I'm just going to go to the catalog, and uh, and we'll purchase one of those real quick. Maybe two, actually. It's going to be $82.80 for the two of those, but we need them. We really, really need them. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. Yeah, that is quite literally all we needed. So now we can take our hub and, uh, and rotor, get that bolted up, and now, now we can get the other front wheel bolted up as well. So, the next issue that I'm thinking is going to be an issue, I don't know this for sure, but uh, we don't have a driver's seat. So, that means we probably won't be able to get in here and turn the wheel, which is going to be an issue getting it into the garage. But let's at least see if we can, if we can roll the thing now. Does it have an e-brake? It must, because it's not budging. Oh, yeah, right here. Perfect. Okay. Now we've got that up. Really? We still can't push the thing? Okay, we can, but it's a very, very slow process. At least it's rolling. I really I really can't complain too much. I'm just now noticing where I'm hung up on the mirror. We're also missing the, uh, the driver's side mirror, but I believe that's attached to the door. So we'll probably get one of those when we actually get some additional body panels. But for the most part, I'm not super concerned about the body panels. I really just want this thing to... By the end of today, I, j I just want it to be able to roll better than this. Again, doesn't have to move under its own power, uh, nor does it need to look pretty, because it's supposed to be a beater vehicle. We're going to take this thing everywhere. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's been very, very challenging just trying to get this thing positioned on the hoist, because this side of the vehicle is very... Wait, can I just air up that tire, maybe? Uh, it's very, very low to the ground, so it, it doesn't really... It doesn't really want to have the um, the hoist arms go underneath of the thing. Yeah, that did that did absolutely nothing. That did absolutely nothing. This really takes me back, man. It, it really takes me back to when I had a uh, a very slammed golf, and just just in order to get like my floor jack underneath of it, I needed to use an additional jack just so I could, you know, actually get the the jack pad underneath for the floor jack. I mean. So we're kind of having to do a similar thing just to get it on the hoist. Let's uh, let's lower this jack back down. And we'll move it up to the front. Do the exact same procedure. The driver's side front doesn't really want to cooperate. So I'm going to try just three posts. There we go. And then, can we still move this now? No, once it's up in the air, you can't move it anymore. So we're just going to leave it on the tripod like this until we get the rest of the suspension adjusted. That way... Oh, yeah, dude, we're missing springs. That's why it's sagging everywhere. We don't have springs in the front whatsoever. And then we're missing a spring at the rear. So let's let's actually grab the adjustable 
suspension because honestly i would like to lift this thing just so we have a little bit more uh ground clearance so let's see if we can actually buy those adjustable ones from uh from the shop we sure can but they're very very expensive 151 bucks a pop that's just for one side so we need two for the rear and we need two for the front we have 3100 dollars again we are so broke, dude. So broke. Alternatively, yes, we could have bought, like, the, the lifted springs. But this way, if we ever want to slam the thing later on, we've already got the suspension components to be able to do so. Thankfully, there is just the one spring currently in the rear, so we can grab that. And it looks like it's in good condition, so I'll probably go pawn that off. Again, just because we are so broke, we're really, uh, we're really struggling out here, but it's gonna be all right. And it doesn't look like there's any way for us to adjust it prior to install. So we're going to grab our spring compressor again and just get that mounted up in there. Same thing with the other side. Perfect. Looking better already. Now up to the front. Same deal. Just get that chucked in there and that one. So by default, it looks like they are lowered slightly. So let's see if we can't just raise it up. I don't know what tool we would even need to use for that maybe the maybe the pry tool no maybe no tool maybe we maybe we don't need a tool at all and we can just like scroll wheel or something on this okay that is also not working so if it's not the pry tool then it's probably the wrench which i left outside okay oh this guy didn't actually need to buy him so we're gonna run around the corner here and just scrap it. I think we spent like five, maybe seven bucks on that. We got two bucks back, so not uh, not the end of the world. Yes, it does. It does look like we just used the wrench for this. So that would be max height then. Fully loosened. Got that done for the rear. Make our way up to the front. Do the exact same thing. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to drop the wrench. We'll get this thing lowered back down to the ground. And hopefully, it'll stand on its own. There we go, dude. It's not lifted, per se. But it does It does seem like it has a little bit more ground clearance. Which is honestly all, all I can ask for. So, at this point in the build, we're kind of at a bit of a standstill. Since we don't really have that much money. Which means we don't have enough money to buy a vehicle from the dealership. And, and do a quick rust repair. So, we will have to accept some uh, some customer work someone told someone told that pistons are bad okay seems easy enough first thing we're gonna do is just see if it turns over but it probably won't since the customer stated that it has bad pistons or somebody told them that it has bad pistons yeah that is that is 100 not happening so we're gonna have to do all the work out here or we could try to back it in the garage let me turn the wheel just slightly this way and uh we'll we'll drop the parking brake just see if we can't push it in there Ooh, that's a pretty solid angle actually wait 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 chill 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 okay nothing happened i'm not really sure why you continued to have momentum after you hit a parked car but that's that's fine i guess you're in a decent enough spot i should also mention i wasn't worried that it was going to damage our, our beater vehicle i was just worried that it was going to damage the customer's vehicle because again we can't afford to be repairing anything right now all right so we've got a wrench we're gonna pop the hood on old girl and i'm just gonna go ahead and unfasten the bolts on the transmission we're gonna unfasten the bolts on the engine mounts and i'm just gonna take this this tiny puny little inline four over to uh over to the engine stand because doing all the work in the engine bay especially to the bottom end is gonna be next to impossible the real tricky part about this, oh yeah, we're going to have to also unbolt the exhaust, aren't we? I really should have just done this on the hoist, dude. This is this is very challenging. I'm hoping by span clicking I'll be able to unfasten the, the rest of the drive shaft bolts. We've got two now. Two is good. We just have one more around here somewhere. Finally. Finally, transmission is out. Uh, the only other thing that we have to disconnect now are going to be the upper and lower radiator hoses. And then we should be good to pick this thing up 
or not. Oh, right, fuel line, fuel line, fuel line. There we go. Okay, that comes off. And then we should have some, some leads coming off of the battery as well. Okay, this time for sure. There we go. Let's get this brought over to the engine stand. Get it securely fastened. And then we're just going to rotate this thing straight over since we know the issue or the customer has stated that the issue is on or is in the, uh, the bottom end. We're just going to unbolt the oil pan here so we can... So we can take a peek. All this work for like 600 bucks, you guys. It's just sad. It's just sad. Okay, it's just two pistons? Yeah, there is another one back there. So we're gonna unbolt those rod caps. That piston's gonna come out. This one is also gonna come out. We just have to buy two brand spanking new pistons and get everything thrown back together. Now that the engine's been reinstalled, instead of trying to do the back-breaking work of a transmission install and exhaust install just here on the ground in the garage, what I'm going to do instead is get this thing moved on over to the inspection pit. I think we'll have a much, much easier time doing stuff over there. With the lad in position, now we just have to flip the switch, opens up our inspection pit, and I'm going to start with the transmission. So that guy is going to go right there. Oh my, dude, why didn't I do this from the get-go? Honestly, why didn't I do this from the get-go? This is so much easier. Okay, we've got four on the bottom, and surprisingly, is the thing moving? Excuse me, what? Okay, I guess I have to be a little bit more careful. I know the e-brake is ripped. Why is it rolling, dude? Stop! I have officially trapped myself inside of the inspection pit. This is good. Wait, I can unstuck. I guess the floor here above the inspection pit is just really, really slippery for whatever reason. So it doesn't even matter if you have the e-brake ripped or not. What was I saying about the transmission? Oh, so there are four bolts here on the bottom. I don't remember working with this tr transmission ever. Uh, and then there are four at the top. Unlike our um, El Camino transmission, you know, this has this has eight bolts whereas the El Camino only has the four here at the top. But there we go, that is together. Let's grab our exhaust. Thankfully, it's just an inline four, so we only have the one exhaust to mount back up. Why did you just fall? This car is cursed. This car is actually cursed. Let's see if the job is done. Missing fluids. Missing fluids, of course. Let's just roll it forward. Probably close the inspection pit as well. After removing the oil pan, it's no surprise that we're going to be a little light on the oil. Dude, it's not even that bad. Let's just pop the cap off. I think I might actually have a bottle right over here. Not sure how much it has in it, but hopefully it's enough to get this thing topped up and get the job finished. Toss our cap back on. Check the oil again. Okay, that's looking mint. And now for the radiator. Just because we did have to remove both the upper and lower radiator hose. It's completely bone dry. Somebody please remind me next time not to accept a piston job because that just straight up was not worth it. Was not worth our time at all. Let's put our radiator cap back on, get it all shut up, and there are loose bolts. We're gonna lose $30 for some loose bolts. Okay, I'm gonna get these, I'm gonna get these tossed in the trash real quick. I'll get my wrench. I'm pretty sure I probably just loosened like one of the uh, one of the seat bolts when I was trying to um, take apart the transmission. That that's my guess. Let's let's hope I'm right. I see it was this one, which is why the e-brake wasn't holding. Let's see if that was the only loose bolt. It sure was. There we go. Six hundred and nineteen dollars. As I said, definitely not worth it. But uh, now we know, right? Now we know. So let's do, I think we have time probably for one more customer job. We just have to get enough money to the point where, you know, later on we'll be able to go back to the dealership and uh, and purchase another quick rust repair. But let's see what our next customer vehicle is. My car seems to sit uneven. A suspension job. We do currently have the beater on the hoist, so we'd have to move that in order to do this one. I'm going to skip it. Can you change... All worn suspension parts. Skip again. Can you paint the changed body panel to match my car's color? Absolutely not. Something is wrong with 
shifting. Yeah, let's do that. I'm guessing the transmission is just, yeah, completely shot. That thing looks absolutely filthy. So let's drop the e-brake again. And this time, I'm going to do the smart thing, which is pull the vehicle over top of the inspection pit. We've just got the four bolts here at the top of the transmission. And then this is likely going to be similar to the lab that we just completed, where there will be four more on the bottom. And just like that, transmission is out. We have a five-speed gearbox. So let's see how much the transmission actually costs. Oh, it's not that bad. 426. 426. 65. Got a brand spanking new one. And just like that, the deed is done. 1400 bucks, super easy. So since the transmission costs around 400 bucks and we made 1400, we basically made about a thousand in all, which puts us up to $4,700. Let's see if we have another quick transmission job. $700 to respray a car. I'm good. I'm good. Car seems to sit uneven. That's suspension again. Change the fuel tank. We would probably have to add fuel to it afterwards, so I'm going to skip that one as well. Uh, can you fix the rust and repaint the parts? Would we be getting a lot of money for this, you think? Probably not. $623. It's not going to require that much work, except it is, because that thing is rusty as all get out. Okay, I'm not going to move it, though. I'm not going to move it whatsoever. We're just going to get our flapper wheel right here. Get to grinding, and then we'll uh, we'll respray it. Funny enough, this color actually looks really similar to our El Camino's primer color. Paint code is 8F8C91. 8F8C91. There we go. Buy one can. Hopefully that's going to be enough to finish this thing up. The, um, the color code is close-ish to the same color that we've sprayed the El Camino. However, this is definitely a lighter gray. This one looks more like primer than ours. But, should be as easy as that. Let's see if the job is complete. Easy, 623 bucks. And we have a, you know, a decent amount of spray paint left. With that job complete, that puts us up to 5,300 buckaroonies. So hopefully in the next episode, you know, we're still going to have to make some money so we can dump some more money into our soon-to-be tow rig. But hopefully we'll have enough to be able to purchase another rust repair from the dealership. And then we'll just... We'll keep scaling up, you know, as we do. But I do think that's where we're going to wind things down at for today. So once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.